I recently started to use the SuperCloud repository. It's basically a tool that you hook up with your cloud code and allows you to use really complex prompts with just a shortcut. You can add different flags, different personas, depending on what you want it to execute. Before anything else, this is meant to be really simple. It does have a lot of commands that allows you to customize whatever you want the task to do, but Essentially, these commands should do everything on their own. I'll show you the documentation for one of these commands in just a bit, but basically you have uh, development, analysis, quality, and other commands that you can execute. For development, essentially, like if you're starting from scratch, you'd use this command right here to build it from zero, or if you want to focus more on the design, implementation, I believe, is more for a specific feature. And then as for analysis, you have this command, which I thought to be absolutely phenomenal since if you ask Claude code to just go inside of your project, scrape everything up and give you a feedback on an analysis of your project, what's going on, what should be improved, what should be added, it will do a nice job, but not even close to what this prompt does. And I'll show you that in just a minute as well. Let's go up here where it says docs. Let's open that folder up. In here, you'll see that we have different markdown files for command guides, flag guides, installation guide, persona, and super cloud user guide. Let's first look at the super cloud user guide just to get some minor insights on how to use this. So as I said before, don't overthink it. Super cloud tries to help. The truth about these 17 commands, you don't need to memorize them. Just start with analysis or implementation. So for example, inside of my cloud interface, I could just hit slash and see all the commands already in there with a short description of what they do. So it's just really intuitive for us to go inside of cloud code and select something like analyze, right? Let me hit enter, uh, analyze is running. So this is the comprehensive code analysis report it generated, architecture review, quality code assessments. If you scroll down here, you'll notice that it gives us some score on specific areas for improvement. So code quality score 7.5 out of 10, and then authentication risk high. So after all this, it comes up with what we should work on next. And then it gathers the priority recommendations. The high priority list has security, validation, rate limiting, then a medium priority, a low priority. And you can always just ask Cloud Code to give us all this in a markdown code so we keep track of what uh, we need to do next. So now just to contextualize how these flags work, I have another instance of Cloud Code and I'll type in the same command, so review, but now with different flags, which are persona, think hard, focus, quality, uh, validate, and C7. While that's running, let's go over to the doc documentation and inside of the flags guide, you'll notice we have all these flags listed here. When I say C7, what it does, enables context seven for official library documentation. Here we have a bunch of different flags that you can use and each one has a different purpose, but as the owner of the repository explains, you shouldn't need to memorize all these flags. In here, he explains that the truth about these 17 commands, you don't need to memorize them, just start with, uh, uh, the raw command and see what happens. Then down here, auto activation is pretty neat. SuperCloud attempts to detect what you're trying to do and activate relevant specialists, security expert, performance optimizer, etc., without you managing it. Usually works well. Okay, now we have a final breakdown. The security of this app is three out of 10. Testing, one out of 10, it doesn't even have any testing. Uh, documentation is poor as well. Overall, the text is much smaller, but you get a sense of what you need to improve inside of your code base so that it is optimal for production. Now, installing SuperCloud is pretty easy. Just git clone the repository. I won't do that right now because I've already done that here. So ls super cloud framework, you'll want to go inside of that folder. So cd super cloud. Once inside there, you'll want to just run this command. So python dash m super cloud install, paste that in there. I've already done that. But once you do, it should install everything pretty fine. Actually, let me execute it again, just because I hate when I see tutorials teaching how to install something, and then the person doesn't even try to install it. So let's just execute the command. Uh, you'll see a quick installation, minimal installation, custom selection, just choose quick installation after you select that. Place Y, proceed with installation Y once again. You might not be seeing my screen, so let me move this over here. Y, okay creating backup of existing installation. That happened here just because I already have an installation. And soon enough, you'll see this message. If you have a cloud code session running, you'll have to go over there, like for example, this one and just close it. So just control CC, you'll close that, open it once again. And, and as soon as you hit slash, you'll see all of the super cloud commands for you to use. Now, as always, I like to really test this and create something that is maybe a necessity or it's just me overthinking, trying to create random things. But 
the prompt I used was just this. So slash SC design, this is a fresh new project. Build everything in here. And I specified this because I was already inside of the folder that I wanted the project to be created in. Then I specified I need a way to redirect users to. And then I specified maker school from Nick, just because this was a tip that Nick gave, which is if you have a school community, use your own referral link and I can get that referral link from here. As you can see, I've made $0 from affiliate, probably because I never used this before. But I can just go over to my community and grab this link right here and just paste it down below in the description of my videos. But the first thing I thought was, okay, this link will be too big. And there's another thing that I've been wanting to do for the longest time, which is track where the link came from. Right, let me explain this with ScollyDraw. So I have video one, video two, and I have a link in each one of them. I know this is a common pattern where people might place in a UTM, so UTM whatever. But what's annoying about creating links like this is that every time you post a video, you have to generate a new link and post it in there. And also this link can feel a bit sketchy because it has a bunch of different characters after the slash. So my overthinking brain came up with, uh, I have this domain right here. I just place in slash one. One for what? The, the video. This, this would basically be the ID of the video, which for every video, I just increment one. Like this video right here would be dash two and they're on. And then this link would redirect to a different page. The user wouldn't even see this page, which would be the actual leonardogregorio.com slash ID. What this page would do is basically capture where that link came from and redirect to the actual link that I want, which is this link right here. By doing this, I could have a dashboard where I understand which type of videos have more people clicking on the link and I'd have a shorter link. Now, if you'd asked me to build something like this like two, three years ago, I'd say that this overthinking just isn't worth it. It's honestly not that hard, but if you already have platforms that you could use for free, that does this, then why build it yourself? For my case, it's just because I can manipulate the data and place it in charts and graphs and tables in a way that I'd like to see them. And you'll see the final result that super created for me in just a bit. But for now, these were the prompts I used. So one prompt, second prompt, and in the second prompt, it was still just planning things out. And all I did was really add to it since in its planning, it considered using Next.js 14. And I really prefer to use the latest version. One detail is that to use these commands with a prompt, just place in double quotes and insert your prompt in there. Don't use double quotes inside of the prompt prefer to use single quotes or else it will probably bug it. Okay, so aside from this additional instruction, I just asked it to build things using the super Claude command. Then I got some errors. This was just debugging it. Got a couple errors after that. For some reason, it's not working. Failed to load resources. The server responded with a status of 404. But then after three prompts debugging, I finally got it working and then decided to add a new feature. Add a monthly calendar to the admin panel. After that, it was just the command that you guys saw, which was the analyze command. And this is what it generated. So basically, if I grab this, open a anonymous tab and visit the page, uh, let's see, page four, hit enter. Nice, so it redirected me to that link. And because of this link, now it has this message where Leonardo Gregorio invited you. And now back in my admin panel, if I refresh this, it should have 17 clicks instead of 16. Not only that, but I have a calendar here where I can just click on this, a dialog will open with all the links that were clicked. Down here are the video references. And these references are basically, so for example, the four that I typed in, let me type that in and say video for the video blah. This makes no sense. Let me just get this right here. Add reference. Now that is referenced and shows that it received one click uh, from this number. And probably inside of the dialog, it also shows the title. Not only that, but I also got an implementation for geolocation so I can track from which countries uh, all the visits came from. No, I wouldn't say this is production level ready yet. As you saw from the analysis, there's a lot of security issues and that should be fixed in about like 10 prompts. A lot of debugging, a lot of edge cases that we have to solve. But as someone that's constantly building things, I know that the prompting part is really important. 
And most of the times it's really repetitive prompts. And yeah, we could add that to the cloud.md, but I just feel like it messes up the context. Also because these prompts in here are more like verbs. So analyze something and inside of the cloud.md, it's more about specifying the project and not explicitly telling it to do something. And even inside of the prompt to like analyze something, you have specific terms that you should use. That just makes it more efficient and super cloud just nailed that. And if you're really into building things and you want to build it as fast as possible and actually reliable, with without using much of the tools out there and courses that just teach you how to go inside of an AI and say, hey, create me this, and then the AI won't build you anything that you really need, but they will promise, yeah, you just need to prompt more and then whatever you want to build just gets really expensive. And to avoid that loophole, consider becoming a member of the AI Forge. I just started this web apps course that gives you a complete blueprint for you to start building your project today. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comment section. See you in the next video. Till then.